Our students often ask which side of the rafter you should remove the half lap from. The answer is that it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. So if you choose to remove the wood on the right hand side, do that for all of the rafters. If you, do, if you choose to remove the wood from the left hand side, do that with all of the rafters. If you take a look at your rafter cut sheet, you'll see that with the top side of the rafter facing you, the cut sheet calls for the right hand side of the half lap to be removed. I am following that protocol here. So this is the top side of the rafter and we've outlined this half of the rafter to be removed. So there are many different ways that this could be cut at this point. We've shown you the handsaw technique where you make two or three different cuts and then chisel and then slick. We've also shown you the circular saw technique where you make many cross cuts with the circular saw and then remove that loose wood with the chisel and then slick. I'm gonna show you a third technique which involves using a large circular saw and we'll actually cut in along this line roll the rafter 180 degrees and cut along the same line on the other side. Then we'll make a third cut here across the end. Because the circular saw blade is circular, it's going to make a cut like this and a cut like this. So we'll have an odd shaped piece of wood left after making that cut that we'll need to remove with a hand ripping saw. Finally, we'll make a saw cut across here and this entire block will come out. So this is the saw that we would use for this cut. It actually has a 16 inch blade on it <clears throat> and it will cut obviously a little bit more than half of this cut in both directions. So to get this saw ready, I'm going to adjust the depth so I'm cutting a little bit less than its full depth of cut, which is six inches. Put it a little bit closer to half the depth of the rafter. I don't like the two saw cuts to overlap too much because if the saw is out of square or if I'm applying pressure one way or the other and I cause the saw blade to cut out of square, um, that can be quite an issue here on the end half lap. Now I can roll the rafter over and make the same cut on the other side. All right, so cut turned out very nicely. You can see that I can get very close to the line with that saw. The next step is to make this cut. To make this final cut, I'm gonna use that guy's little brother. And before I cut, I wanna check the depth. Notice that the circular saw is not plugged in while I'm playing around with this adjustment. That looks good. So the final step is to remove this bit of wood that the large circular saw left. I'm going to use this hand saw, which is called the Ryoba, ripping tooth on one side, cross cut on the other. Okay, and with that, the whole block comes out and we can move directly into slicking this surface. So like I've done with the other tenons, I'm going to establish a flat shelf here and a flat shelf here that's right at the line and then I'll worry about what's going on in the middle.
So I've got graphite showing up just along the edges and this outside surface. This part of the half lap is done. I still need to clean up the shoulder just a little bit. Okay, that looks square as well. With the shoulder of the half lap square to the surface of the rafter and this area flat, the half lap is done. The next thing we're gonna do is flip the rafter around and lay out the bird's mouth. Hey there, thank you for watching. Here at Shelter Institute in Woolwich, Maine, we teach a wide variety of house building and timber framing and carving classes. We'd love to see you here, but if you can't make it to Maine to take one of our classes, our online class is available at shelterinstitute.com.